André de Longjumeau was a 13th century Dominican missionary and diplomat and one of the most active Occidental diplomats in the East in the 13th century. He led two embassies to the Mongols, the first carried letters from Pope Innocent IV and the second bore gifts and letters from Louis IX of France to Gayu Khan. Well acquainted with the Middle East, he spoke Arabic and Chaldean. André went to Constantinople to obtain the crown of thorns bought by Louis IX from Baldwin II. It is preserved today in a 19th-century reliquary, in Notre Dame Cathedral, Paris. André's first mission to the East was when he was asked by the French King Louis IX to go to Constantinople to obtain the crown of thorns which had been sold to him by the Latin Emperor Baldwin II in 1238, who was anxious to obtain support for his empire. André was accompanied on this mission by a Dominican friar, Brother Jacques. André of Longjumeau led one of four missions dispatched to the Mongols by Pope Innocent IV. He left Lyon in the spring of 1245 for the Levant. He visited Muslim principalities in Syria and representatives of the Nestorian and Jacobite churches in Persia, finally delivering the papal correspondence to a Mongol general near Tabriz. In Tabriz, André de Longjumeau met with a monk from the Far East, named Simeon Robin Atta, who had been put in charge by the Khan of protecting the Christians in the Middle East. At the Mongol camp near Kars, André had met a certain David, who in December 1248 appeared at the court of King Louis IX of France in Cyprus. André, who was now with the French king, interpreted David's, a real or pretended offer of alliance from the Mongol general Egidii, and a proposal of a joint attack upon the Islamic powers of Syria. In reply to this the French sovereign dispatched André as his ambassador to Gayou Khan. Longjumeau went with his brother Jacques and several others, John Godricky, John of Carcassonne, Herbert Le Sommelier, Gerbert of Sens, Robert, a certain William, and an unnamed clerk of Poissy. The party set out on February 16, 1249, with letters from King Louis and the papal legate, and rich presents, including a chapel tent lined with scarlet cloth and embroidered with sacred pictures. From Cyprus they went to the port of Antioch in Syria, and thence travelled for a year to the Khan's court going ten leagues per day. Their route led them through Persia, along the southern and eastern shores of the Caspian Sea, and certainly through Talos, northeast of Tashkent. On arrival at the Supreme Mongol Court, either that on the Emil River, or more probably at or near Karakorum itself. Southwest of Lake Baikal, André found Gayu Khan dead, poisoned, as the envoy supposed, by Badu Khan's agents. The regent mother Ogil Kaimish seems to have received and dismissed him with presents and a dismissive letter for Louis IX. But it is certain that before the friar had left Tartary, Mok, Gayuk's successor, had been elected. André's report to his sovereign, whom he rejoined in 1251 at Caesarea in Palestine, appears to have been a mixture of history and fable, the latter affects his narrative of the Mongols' rise to greatness. And the struggles of their leader Genghis Khan with the mythical Prester John, and in the supposed location of the Mongols' homeland, close to the prison of Gog and Magog. On the other hand, the envoy's account of Mongol customs is fairly accurate, and his statements about Mongol Christianity and its prosperity, though perhaps exaggerated are likely factual. Mounds of bones marked his road, witnesses of devastations which other historians record in detail. He found Christian prisoners from Germany in the heart of Tartary, and was compelled to observe the ceremony of passing between two fires. As a bringer of gifts to a dead Khan, gifts which were treated by the Mongols as evidence of submission. This insulting behavior, and the language of the letter with which Andre reappeared, marked the mission of failure, King Louis, says jointly, say Repenny Fort. The date and location of Andre's death is unknown. We only know of Andre through references in other writers, see especially William of Rubrooks in Recoid of Voyages, 4. pp. 261, 265, 279, 296, 310, 353, 363, 370, jointly, ed. Francisque Michel, pp. 142, etc. Semicolon Jean Pierre Sarajan, in same volume. pp. 254 235, William of Nangis in Recoy des Historiens de Gaulle, 20. 359 to 367, Ramassa, Memoirs sur les relations politiques des princes chrétiens. Avec les Mongols, p. 52. Thanks for watching.